Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Zon Academy. Today, we have a SEGA in the house. Bryce Hiller is here, and he will be uh, discussing with us a SEGA's portfolio and their expansion and what's new in 2024. Thank you so much, Bryce, for joining us today. Yeah, thank so, you. It's great to be here. Bryce is the SEGA's digital education coordinator, and he's prepared this great presentation for all of us today. So I'm so excited to have you here. He has prepared some poll questions for us and we'll be doing a Q&A at the end of this presentation. So if you have any questions, Bryce will be answering them live for you. Just type them in at the Q&A section at the bottom of the screen and we'll be happy to take care of that at the end. But I just wanna let you guys know that we'd like you to be interactive with us. Again, Bryce has put together some poll questions and I'm gonna, uh, turn this over to Bryce, but I'm going to launch them over to you now. So if you wouldn't mind, please just answer them for us. Awesome. Thanks, Fran. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Fran. And thank you, Zahn, for having me today. Uh, I always love doing this stuff and, um, you know, kind of connecting with, you know, connecting with lab techs is really my favorite thing, honestly, to do. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping, I suppose. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share my, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And um, I just kinda kind of wanted to let you guys know who I am, if you don't know me already. Uh, my name is Bryce Hiller. Like Fran said, I am the Digital Education Coordinator here at ASIGA. Um, I kinda juggle a lot of different tasks and wear a lot of different hats. Uh, from stuff like this to educational courses and marketing and a little bit of sales, all, all, all kinds of stuff. But uh, really, education is my passion. And um, my background actually is as a lab tech. Uh, that's kind of where I got started and, and learned learned a lot of the, the lab business on the analog side and then, you know, eventually transitioned to, to digital technology. Um, 3D printing has always been my passion in the laboratory. I just find the technology to be absolutely fascinating and revolutionary for, for the dental lab environment. So I'm super thrilled to be uh, here with you representing ASIGA. And um, with that, we can go ahead and, and uh, dive in. So we're gonna talk about what's new in 2024 from ASIGA. This is a really, really exciting year for us. We've, we have a lot of new products that have come out and will be coming out this year that we're really excited to share with everybody. A lot of you might've already seen um, a lot of this new tech in Chicago that we actually launched, uh, but if you weren't there, or if you want kind of a more in-depth deep dive into the technology itself, that's kind of what we're gonna be talking about today. machines um, that we are launching. And we're going to talk about each of these uh, over the course of the next hour. Bryce, I have the results. If you want to get the results are. Okay, so yeah. in lab size, 63% are a one to five person lab, 13% or a six to 15 person lab. We have 0% at 16 to 30 and 25% are 30 plus. So that's great. And as far as indications that they're looking to print, 22% of our attendees are looking to do models, 44% are dentures, splints, surgical guides, and clear aligners all came in at 11%, and 0% are flexible partials. Okay, fantastic. What really excites me about that second poll question is the number of people that are interested in printing dentures. So I am a denture junkie. I love printing dentures. Um, I've been I've been printing dentures for for quite some time, uh, really since the very first denture resin hit the market. Um, I've been designing and printing dentures. So seeing such a big number, forty percent and over, of you guys that are that are looking to do that is absolutely fantastic. So that's that's exciting. Um, 
there's some really, really great technology packed into our new machines that make denture printing particularly enticing. Um, so we'll get into some of that here shortly. Um, and the first machine that that I would like to talk about with you guys, our, our, our kind of biggest new product for the year is, is the Ultra. So like I said, some of you might have seen this in Chicago, um, but you might not have kind of gotten necessarily all the you know nitty gritty details about it. So that's what we're gonna go over now. Absolutely love that video. Put the smile on my face every time I watch it. So this is, uh, as you just saw, this is the new Asiga Ultra. And as it kind of mentioned uh, early in the video, this truly is not only, in my opinion, the most advanced 3D printer that we have ever designed and manufactured, but I believe it to be the most advanced 3D printer in dentistry on the market, period. And there's several reasons why, why I say that in terms of technology that we're going to discuss. Uh, it, one thing that is pretty cool about it is we actually submitted this printer um, in a contest in Australia, um, and it actually won the Good Design Award for uh, new products of 2024. And this was both for the technology inside as well as the aesthetic design of the machine. So with the Ultra, we actually have, most people don't know this, we actually have two models available. So if you were in Chicago, the model that you would have seen is actually the Ultra 50. So I'm gonna show you in, a, in just a moment, the build plate size on the Ultra 50. Uh, it is just slightly smaller than the current Asiga Pro 4K that some of you may have in your laboratory. However, we also have a second model, which is the Ultra 32. Now you're probably wondering what that numerical value stands for. And it's the, the XY pixel resolution of the printer itself. So the Ultra 50 has a pixel resolution of 50 microns and the Ultra 32 has a pixel resolution of 32 microns. And if you're not super familiar with 3D printing as a general rule, the smaller the pixel resolution is, the more accurate the machine is going to be. So the Ultra 32, uh, really, it has a smaller build plate. It's about it's it's actually exactly pretty much the same size as the current Max. If you're familiar with that that machine from us, um, however, it's almost double the accuracy. So we've we've really um, we've really kind of stepped up our game when it comes to accuracy, even from already being the most accurate 3D printer on the market. Uh, we've improved that even more with with the Ultra. So you can see here. Uh, just kind of a little screenshot of roughly, you know, 
what kind of production capacity you're looking at with each machine. So with the Ultra 50, you can fit maybe, you know, anywhere from seven to 10 full arch models on that build plate in one in one print job. And then on the Ultra 32, uh, you can see here it shows jewelry, but you'll probably fit two to three full arches um, when it comes to models. Um, but really, I think this machine is most is going to most benefit when it comes to things that require, you know, a, a, maybe a little higher degree of precision, perhaps temporary crowns or uh, denture teeth, for example, things that you really, really want the best possible surface finish from. Um, the, the Ultra 32 is absolutely fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about the technology that's actually inside the Ultra because, you know, this is a brand new machine and there are some really, really critical feature, uh, feature updates and uh, added features in this machine that uh, are really, really beneficial. So as with all of our machines, uh, we still have our smart positioning, smart positioning system, which is our active layer monitoring. So if you're not familiar with how this works, um, essentially our machine, what, one thing that makes our machine so unique is that the printer is actually measuring the layer thickness that you're printing throughout the entire print uh, printing process. So every single layer is measured and monitored for accuracy. And here's a little, uh, like a little animation as to how that actually works. So what you're seeing here, um, these flashing sensors, these are the position encoders. And what they're actually doing during each layer that's being printed, they're measuring the weight fluctuations of that resin. And that allows the printer to know exactly where the build plate is at all times. So if you're printing an object in, let's say, 100 micron layers, every single layer is measured to be exactly 100 microns. Not, you know, it's not a range from 90 to 110. It's exactly 100 microns every single layer. Some of the other uh, really, really awesome features of this printer is this is actually a desktop true 4K 3D printer. So it is a 4K native resolution, which uh, really is best in class at this point in the industry. Um, it's, uh, it's why we're able to get such a large print envelope with such a high degree of accuracy. Uh, and as always, it's, it utilizes our DLP micromirror technology with the latest chipset, with the highest re reliability, and with the broadest wavelength, cap wavelength capability of any imaging technology on the market. Uh, we also still have our auto calibrating UV LED. So this is that built-in radiometer that if you've ever listened to us speak, um, we, always, we always talk about the radiometer. If you don't know what a radiometer is, and that's okay, I didn't either until you know I got into 3D printing. Um, a radiometer is a device that measures light output, measures the power output of a light source. Well, what do we know about every light bulb, whether it's halogen or um, LED, um, any, any light bulb that's ever been made by humans is they, they degrade over time. They lose power intensity. Well, the problem that this introduces in 3D printing is that your, your cure times for each layer are specifically set to the power output of your machine. So if you have a machine that doesn't have a built-in radiometer, after maybe six months to a year, the power is gonna, the power output on that machine is gonna drop. And if there's no radiometer built into the machine, there's no way for that machine to automatically correct your exposure times. Now, in all of our machines, we have a built-in radiometer that throughout every single print job is constantly measuring the power output of your projector and automatically compensating your cure times, whether it needs to go up or down, uh, to compensate for any kind of power fluctuation. So that's why our machines have been proven to be the most reliable on the market. Because whether whether you're you you know you're starting at day one with your machine, or you're six months into your machine, or you're three years into our, into your machine, um, you're going to get the same reliability regardless because of that built-in radiometer. One of my favorite new features of, of the Ultra is the infrared material heater. So when we were watching that video, you may have noticed underneath the, the build window, the build glass, you saw you maybe saw these silver kind of spoon-like um, little objects under there. 
those are actually the infrared heaters. So the reason these infrared heaters are so important uh, moving forward when it comes to 3D printing is because, you know, we're really looking ahead to the next generation of 3D print resins. So uh, if you think about it in, you know, practical terms, what do we all want from the next gen 3D print resins? Typically two things. We want them to be stronger, right? And we want them to be more aesthetic. Well, at the end of the day, there's only there's really only two ways you can achieve both of those things. Uh, when it comes to strength, you achieve a higher strength or higher tensile strength in a resin by increasing the proportion of longer chain oligomers into the, the actual resin chemistry. The problem is when you introduce these longer chain oligomers into the resin, it tends to increase the viscosity and make a very thick resin. The problem with thick resins is because they don't flow very well, they're very difficult to print. Um, the second thing that I think we probably all want to see, you know, out of the next gen resins um, is better aesthetics. Now we have some really, really uh, aesthetic resins that have that have come on the market in the last few years. However, we always want them to look better. Now, the way that you achieve a, a, a higher aesthetic 3D print resin is by introducing a higher concentration of ceramic content into the resin itself. Now, again, similar to oligomers, the problem with, with adding ceramic content to the resin is it tends to increase the, the viscosity. So once again, creating a thick resin that does not flow well. Now, the way that you counteract a very, a very thick, high viscosity resin is with heat. Uh, when you apply heat to these resins, it actually will thin them out and allow them to flow better, which means they can print more quickly and they can print more reliably. Um, and so we're really the first ones to kind of bring on this, this infrared heating technology or any, any heating technology um, as effective as this um, in order to, to kind of pave the way for the next generation of 3D print resins. Um, you know, with the Asiga Max, when that came out back, all the way back in 2016, you know, we had some really revolutionary technology that future-proofed that machine and is really why to this day, it's still the most trusted 3D printer in the dental laboratory. And we feel we've done that again with the Ultra by adding um, features like these infrared heaters into the machine. And here's a little example of how those work. So here's those little kind of like spoon looking, silver spoon looking objects that I was referring to. So these are the infrared heaters and they will actually heat, uh, they will get up to 70 degrees Celsius, which is quite warm. I don't know that you'll ever need to necessarily go that high, um, but it is it is nice that you have the capability to if need be. And here's just a, a little data chart on um, that kind of shows what I was just kind of going over when it comes to viscosity. So you can see here as the temperature, um, the temperature on all these different resins increases, we can see the viscosity rapidly, rapidly decreases, which is really, really critical for printing these, these high viscosity resins. And um, just like with the Max and the Pro 4K, we still have the regular chamber heaters. Um, so this is really great for just kind of, you know, run of the mill daily 3D printing with resins that don't necessarily require a higher degree of heat for them to print. So basically like our current generation of 3D print resins um, that require maybe a slight degree of temperature increase, you can still achieve that just with the regular chamber heating that we already have in our um, previous generation of machines. And then one of the really awesome new features that we've added um, to the Ultra is transparent mode. So some of you may be familiar with our Ultra Gloss trays. And so our Ultra Gloss trays are used for printing clear objects such as splints and surgical guides um, with a higher degree of aesthetic. Uh, basically, what they do is they allow you to print a splint or a guide, any clear object, and then post-process, i.e. wash and cure, while keeping that object crystal clear. So it eliminates post-polishing. Now, what transparent mode does, um, where Ultra Gloss increases the aesthetics and preserves the aesthetics, rather, transparent mode 
really assist with the accuracy of clear objects. So the reason that this is so important is because clear resins are actually quite difficult to print. And the reason is because it's a transparent resin, you, that light that you're, that you're using to cure your object really tends to overpenetrate and, and cure beyond the layer that you're actually printing um, at, the, it, you know, at the current time. So let's say you're printing layer 25, right, of your splint. In reality, that UV light might actually be might actually be penetrating all the way up to layer 27, 28, 29, 30. So what that means uh, is you you get objects that tend to overcure, and that causes inaccuracy. Well, our transparent mode actually resolves this issue. So with transparent mode, it reduces the um, radically reduces the amount of overcure on your clear objects, leaving uh, leaving your splints and your guides. Um, just as accurate as anything else that you would, you know, typically 3D print in the laboratory. And so you can see here, uh, this maybe isn't like a super, a super clear illustration, but basically this is essentially showing you um, kind of that overcure and how and how it's, you know, how we kind of overcome that. So here's, um, let's just say you're printing this, you know, this kind of microchip type looking object. Um, we actually, we actually did a side by side comparison of the results with and without transparent mode. So you can see the image on the left. Uh, well, I, I should say the image on the top is basically a 2D cross section of the actual STL file. Now in the bottom left hand corner of the screen uh, is that object printed vertically without transparent mode on. And then on the right hand side, that is that is the accuracy of the object when using transparent mode. So you can see some really, really significant um, uh, detail and and you know printing improvement when using transparent mode. So it really is a fantastic new feature that that we're absolutely thrilled to introduce into our new product lineup. So without transparent mode, you know, we, we've, we've all, you know, kind of looked for, well, how do we get around this problem with, um, with printing clear objects? Because it really can be quite difficult. And really, there's only been two solutions up until now. Um, option one, as you can see, kind of in the bottom right hand picture, is by adding UV blockers or pigments to the resin. But the problem is, usually those tend to be either yellow or purple. And on a splint or a surgical guide, we usually don't want to, a yellow or purple surgical guide or, or particularly a splint. You know, we want that truly glass clear object and adding UV blockers and or pigments kind of defeats the purpose a little bit. So that's not really a great solution. Now, the other, uh, the other kind of workaround for, for this problem uh, when it comes to the accuracy um, if you look at the kind of the top left hand picture, um, this is really evident in surgical guides. So that master cylinder that's pointed out there is a basically a perfect circle. Um, and without transparent mode, um, the, the, those sleeves tend to not fit very well on most 3D printers. Um, it's just kind of like I said, it's kind of the nature of printing a clear resin. It just they, they tend to not be super accurate. Um, the workaround is really when it comes to nesting. So um, if you nest that surgical guide with that cylinder perfectly perpendicular to the build plate, you'll tend to have a better result. Now, that may work on a surgical guide with a single implant site. The problem is when you get to objects like this that maybe have multiple implant sites and have places for... Um, like guide pins, retention pins, stuff like that, you can't, there's no way for you to nest this STL file with all of those cylinders being perpendicular to the build plate. So basically it, it, at least three out of five of these implant sites um, in, in cylinders are going to be not super accurate. So this is really why we develop transparent mode because this is a, a, a real problem when it comes to dental 3D printing, uh, especially with clear resins. And transparent mode is our solution to fix that problem. And with uh, and as with all of our printers, 
uh, they are all, uh, the Ultra is Wi-Fi compatible, um, as well as Ethernet compatible and still features wireless direct, which basically acts like a hotspot. And uh, like, let's say your internet connection goes down, um, your printer will act as a hotspot to connect to your PC and you can actually send um, send print jobs directly to the printer from, from your computer without having to go through like your local area network. Let's talk about some of the end user features. So um, one of my favorites is touchless entry. So um, this may seem somewhat insignificant um, at first glance, but in reality, this is a really important feature. Um, if any of you guys have a Sega Maxes or you've gone to other labs that have uh, really any 3D printer, frankly, uh, usually the first thing you notice is the hood, like the bottom section of that hood tends to have a um, a a, a uh, healthy layer, <laughs> I will say, of um, sticky halfway cured resin on it. It looks, you know, you'll see fingerprints and and it just doesn't look very nice. So uh, with touch with touchless entry, we're really kind of solving that problem. And it helps you to keep your machine really, really clean because you don't have to use, you know, sticky resin fingers to open up the hood. It, you can do it just with the wave of a hand. Now, apart from the aesthetics of the printer, this is actually really important um, when it comes to reducing cross-contamination. So any class two medical device, so let's say a splint resin or a denture resin, it is very, very important that you do not cross-contaminate those resins, especially with other resins that are not indicated for intraoral use. So if you have, you know, sticky, sticky resin, uh, sticky model resin on, you know, on your gloves, right? Because we all wear gloves. <laughs> um, you, uh, and then you maybe, you know, you open the hood, it leaves a little bit of resin on the hood. And then later in the day, um, you know, you've got a different set of gloves on and you're, you know, you're finishing a splint or a denture. You open the hood, you get that model resin on your fingers and you go back over here to working on, you know, whatever denture or splint you're working on. Well, now you've just cross contaminated and uh, with a resin that is really not safe for intraoral use. Uh, the touchless entry, again, it fixes this problem by allowing you to open and close the hood with just the wave of a hand without having to actually ever physically touch uh, the red UV hood. And I always like to mention, it's actually just really fun too. When I was at, um, when we were all at uh, Lab Day Chicago a few weeks ago, I found myself just standing at the booth and just constantly, you know, opening and closing the hood just because it's kind of fun. Another really awesome user feature that we've added is the magnetic build platform, uh, which also has a platform recognition sensor. So um, if you have one of our, uh, Maxes or maybe the Pro 4K or really just about any other machine on the market, um, you'll 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 be pretty pretty acutely aware that typically there's some kind of um, like screw washer mechanism that you use. You have to loosen it to take the build plate out. Then you put the build plate back in. You have to retighten it. And, and in addition to that, most you know most printers on the market have a some kind of calibration mechanism on that vertical control arm that usually you know you have to loosen it to um, calibrate the machine and then retighten it after you do the calibration we've actually completely eliminated all of that um, one of the problems that we identified in the market is well how do we how do we make this as user friendly as possible how do we make this so that i can teach my um you know my six or seven year old son how to use this machine um, and this is one of the ways that we've done that. So you'll notice um, the build plate doesn't have any any kind of um, locking mechanism on it. It's just flat on top. And then if you look at that control arm, there's actually no calibration screw. And that's because um, this machine does not require any kind of regular calibration maintenance. Um, we've completely redesigned this control arm to make it as user-friendly as possible. So that build plate, um, is completely electromagnetic. So you set the build plate in, and um, when you start a print job, there's an electromagnet that will automatically lock it to the tune of 80 kilograms of pressure. 
So, um, and it, you don't have to meet to manually turn that on. You can, if you want to, but you don't have to, uh, when you start the print job, it automatically locks it. And not only that, but, um, and I will admit I've done this before. Um, I get into a rush in the lab and I forget, I start a print job and then I realize 10 minutes later, oh my gosh, the build plate sitting on the deck on the desk next to me. And I forgot to put it back in after the last one. I've done it. A lot of people do it. It, it happens. Um, the, the build plate actually has a um, platform recognition sensor. So if you go to try to start a print job and the build plate's actually not in the machine, it'll, it'll flash you a message and it won't start the print job. It'll tell you, hey, put the build plate in, <laughs> which um, seems maybe like a minor, um, you know, a minor feature, but it really does help. And, and like I said, it, it kind of alludes back to how do we make this machine as user friendly as possible? And that's one of the ways that we've done it. So here's a little um, cool little video of exactly, you know, kind of how this works. So it simply sets into place. And then when you start the print job, that electromagnet will, will lock it. One of the other improvements that we've made um, is simple and fast build tray latching. Now, if any of you have a Pro 4K, you're already pretty used to this. If you have a Max and a Pro 4K, you're gonna be very aware of how different that resin tray uh, locking mechanism is. So the Max has kind of those, um, those, those you know, spring-loaded clamps that you use to clamp down on the tray. The Pro 4K has the, um, the, the build tray sliding, uh, slide and lock mechanism. The Ultra is very similar to the Pro 4K slide, slide and lock. However, we do have um, a, a nice feature improvement to that. Um, and that is that there's actually a, a sensor that will tell you if um, the build tray is actually not locked into place. Because actually what happens more often than you might think is uh, people will set the, you know, set the resin tray in the machine and then they get busy, uh, uh, you know, a doctor's calling into the lab or something like that. And they forget to actually pull those sliders back and lock it into place. Well, now with the Ultra, the machine will actually alert you if you try to start a print job and that build plate, or I'm sorry, that resin vat is not locked into place. So again, it's just one of those little quality of life features that um, that make it just very user-friendly, very easy to use, and most importantly, um, kind of fail-proof, frankly. You can see here, it's a very, very simple locking mechanism. It just clamps right down into place. It takes about 10 to 15 seconds to switch materials. And then probably my uh, one of my favorite user, like end user improvements is the user interface. Um, we have completely redesigned both, uh, essentially the entire front panel of our machines. So, um, all new user interface. It's very aesthetic. It's very quick to navigate, um, and um, it's a it's a it's quite a bit more reactive of a touchscreen. So it's just kind of you enjoy using it more than than other machines on the market. It's a very very nice user interface. So here's a little overview of kind of how it works. So we've we've kind of reduced the amount of menu items and kind of condensed things down and kind of reworked the, I guess, the workflow of how you get from point A to point B. So you can see there, the platform is in, the tray is latched, close the hood, and then if there is chamber heating, it will heat, it'll heat the chamber. And then you're off to the races. So really it's it's the printer is intuitive and helps you every step of the way to make sure that um, all of the steps that you need to take for a successful print have been taken. And now you can also access the auto shutdown during a print job, not just before you start the print job. So if you get halfway through a print and you realize, oh man, I gotta go pick the kids up from school, I probably won't be back in today. You can go ahead even during the print job and you can turn on that auto shutdown feature and um, have that print have the printer shut down once the print job has been completed. And as always, uh, the most, in my opinion, one of the most important things about a Sega 
across the board is open material freedom. Uh, once again, we are never going to lock you into any specific resins that you can or cannot use. Um, our, philosoph our philosophy is one of openness and is one of flexibility for the end user. And so that 100% translates into the Asiga Ultra and all the materials that you're already printing, whether it's on an Asiga or any other machine on the market, you're going to be able to uh, print those. You're, you're able to print those machines in the Ultra as well. Um, I know this says over 500 qualified resins. I think we're we're probably over 600 th at this point. I don't know. We add more every week. Um, so just about any resin on the market, you're going to be able um, to print in the Asiga Ultra. Here are just some of the manufacturers that we have listed. And pretty much um, every manufacturer that you may be familiar with is going to be on this list. Um, and there's there's plenty more even beyond this list that are um, available to print. And we have ultra material trays for every application. So our kind of our uh, universal tray with the uh, with the ultra we call our endurance tray. So it's a general purpose durable material material tray for really. Um, uh, universal usage, really. Um, it will print pretty much anything and print it well. Um, this is going to be similar to our, you know, universal tray on the Max, um, on the Max UV. Right now, it's available in a two liter capacity. However, um, hopefully, we'll be able to increase that as we, you know, as we get, um, as we get production kind of ramped up on these trays. And then, um, as with our other machines, we do have the ultra gloss trays available for the ultra. So, like I mentioned earlier, the ultra gloss trays are specifically for three D printing clear objects. Now, you can use any any clear resin you want with these. You're not locked into any specific brand of resin. The magic happens in the tray itself. So, if you're are, if you're used to printing, you know, key splint soft, great, it works fantastic in in the ultra gloss tray. If you're used to printing D or you know next den or what, whatever splint resin you're currently printing it will work in the ultra gloss tray and so here you can really see the difference so the splint on the left side of the screen has has been printed and then post-processed and you can see how cloudy it is um, and patients really don't like to see a splint that's, that that's cloudy it's really kind of a psychological thing they want it to be clear and doctors want it to be clear and on the right, you can see that is um, that's a splint printed with the ultra gloss tray, and is is put, has been washed, cured, and has not been touched with any kind of polishing compound, uh, buffer wheel, anything like that. So it remains glass clear even after the final cure. So it really cuts down on on the the um, the manual labor required to um, produce your splints. <music> Yeah, that's ultra gloss. Um, pretty awesome technology and um, is a fantastic way to cut down on the amount of time that you're having to spend on each splint. So with the ultra, uh, typically it's supplied as an all-in-one bundle. Um, 
And we include the printer, the nesting software, uh, which is a Sika composer. That's always free. Um, never, uh, we never charge any kind of subscription fees, annual fees, um, update fees, nothing like that. Um, and then we, we, we include one, uh, one bottle of a Sega material, one build tray, a toolkit, the Sega flash curing unit, um, and unlimited lifetime technical support, uh, as well as a 12 month warranty. And up next. So is it okay if we send out another poll at this time? Yeah, let's do it. All right, awesome. Here we go. We'd like to know if you're 3D printing, what 3D printers are you currently using? And if you're not 3D printing, please let us know. Cool, cool. So we'll give that a minute. Um, while those answers are coming in, we'll start, we can start on the next topic. Um, Fran, just let me know when those results are in and we'll go over that. Sure will. But up next, the next product that we've released for 2024, say good day to the Max 2. So I'm guessing some of you guys already have a Max UV. Um, it's probably the most um, trusted and, and well-known 3D printer in the dental lab space. Um, we've actually given the Max uh, a bit of an update and we've re we have re-released it as the Max 2. There are some really, really nice improvements to it that um, that I think really, um, really kind of rejuvenate what has been such a great product for the dental lab. So the first thing you'll probably notice is it looks a little bit different. You may you may be trying to figure out, okay, it looks different than mine. And what's how is it different? I'm trying to see, you know, what it is. Well, really, we the first thing that you'll notice is we kind of give it gave it a bit of a facelift. So the same user interface that we have uh, in the Ultra, we've actually added now to the to the Max Two. So um, the the touchscreen, um, kind of the aesthetics of it. So you're going to have that really nice user interface um, now in the Max. I have the results if you'd like to hear them now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so 33% of our attendees are using an Asiga printer. 17% are using something that's different than what we had listed. And 50% are not 3D printing at all. Okay, okay. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Um, that's great. Um, yeah, thank you, Fran. I appreciate that. Um yeah, very, very, very interesting. Um, that fifty did you say fifty percent are are not currently three D printing? Yes, fifty percent are not currently. Okay, cool, cool. Um, very good. So, um, here, like I said, here is the the Max Two, and just like uh, just like the 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 what I call the OG Max UV. Um, still, you know, still has obviously our active layer monitoring that we that we discussed earlier. Still has the same DLP micro mirror technology, has the radiometer still, has all the features that you've come to know and love from a Sega 3D printers. Now, what we've added to it in terms of, you know, real internal functionality is we've added transparent mode. So this is the mode that we talked about earlier where uh, it really, really helps to print your clear objects with a very high degree of accuracy. We have now brought that same technology into the Max 2, um, which is a, a, a just a wonderful improvement. And then, like I said earlier, the, the new uh, intuitive and clean user interface, we've also adapted. We've brought that from the Ultra to the Max 2 as well. The big benefit of the Max is the footprint. Um, these really are are pretty small machines, you know, in terms of their their dimensional size. Um, but we still have all of those amazing features packed into this machine. So if you're limited on space, or um, maybe you don't need a super, you know, high high volume, high production machine, Max really is a perfect fit, and it will still enjoy the open material freedom. Um, that that we 
you know, that we have in all of our machines. So all of those five, 600 resins, however many there are at this point, those can all be printed in the Max 2, in the original Max, in the Pro 4K, in the Ultra, um, in all of our machines. And then finally, again, Wi-Fi, wireless direct, and Ethernet connectivity, um, as always in all of our machines um, included in the Max 2. Similar to the Ultra, we have a material tray for every application. We have our universal tray, which comes in a one, two, five, or 10 liter capacity. We have the Ultra Gloss tray for 3D printing those nice glass clear splints and surgical guides. And then we also have a, a, a different tray for the Max that's available, which is low force. So um, the low force trays in dentistry are really useful for maybe more delicate objects. So for example, if you're wanting, if you're wanting to 3D print um, like metal frameworks for partials that you then want to invest in cast, those tend to be uh, thin, brittle, and they can be difficult to print. Um, the low force build trays are fantastic for this application because they essentially reduce how much pressure is being applied to that printed object during the print process. Uh, it also works well with soft materials. So if you want, if you're going to print um, like orthodont orthodontic indirect bonding trays, or if you're going to print soft tissue for implant models, the low force build tray is a really good option for this as well. And those come in a one liter option. Just like the Ultra, this comes bundled, the Max 2 printer, the Asiga Composer nesting software, one bottle of material, one build tray, the toolkit, the Asiga flash curing unit, unlimited lifetime technical support, and a 12-month warranty. And all Asiga 3D printers are supplied with our Asiga Composer nesting software. And like I said, there are never any fees for our software ever. Um, the Asiga Composer is completely free to use. You can use it on as many computers as you want. And there are, there are no update fees. There are no uh, annual fees at all. Um, and all of our machines include unlimited lifetime technical support. Now, I always like to touch on this a little bit because a lot of times, um, not necessarily in dentistry, but just in life, you know, a company will promise you, well, you've got unlimited, unlimited technical support, unlimited lifetime support. Well, the problem with most of those promises is that only applies to uh, as long as the lifetime of that product is. Um, so really when, when a company, you know, when they come out with the, you know, their next product line, their next generation of product, they consider that previous generation end of life, end of lifetime, Therefore, you no longer get support because the product has outlasted its lifetime. That's not what we mean when we say unlimited lifetime technical support. Our very first machine on the market, which is the which was the Pico 3D printer. Um, I don't know if there's any still in use because that was a long time ago, over 10 years ago, but I'm sure there are. And we still support that product. So you never have to worry like, oh, well, if I buy this machine and another one comes out in five years, Am I going to lose my technical support? The answer is no. You are not going to lose your technical support. We will always support our products. One thing that makes our technical support so unique that I'm fairly positive nobody else can really say is we have worldwide coverage. Um, now, the, the real benefit of that is we have three offices, right? So um, I'm at our office here in Ann Arbor. Um, we have an office in Erfurt, Germany, and then our headquarters, our main headquarters is in Sydney, Australia. So really, regardless of the time of day it is, wherever you're located, there is an Asiga office and we all offer technical support. And so let's say, you know, let's say you're on the West Coast and you're burning the midnight oil and something comes up and you've got to get hold of someone now. You can actually call our office in Australia and there will be someone there to talk to you from technical support to help you. Or let's say, you know, let's say you're, maybe you came into the lab really early, right? And you're, you're in New York or West Virginia, wherever. And it's, you know, 4 a.m., right? 
and you're really up early and you got something you need some help with, you can actually call our office in Germany and get technical assistance. So really, realistically, you have 24 hour support with a SEGA. And we also have our support page where we have a ton of fantastic resources. Um, you can check out our quick tips videos um, for quick answers to common questions. Um, you can also check out all of our support guides for all of our products. And we also have um, an AI chatbot to help you. So um, this is not just kind of a generic um, support chat box. We actually use AI um, when it comes to answering questions you may have. So this AI will actually scan all of our, our entire company's support tickets to find the best answer for the question that you're asking. So it's actually quite intuitive and um, very easy to use and will actually get you a practical answer to what whatever question you might have. Uh, we do have a 12 month warranty on the machine. Um, so this includes, uh, I guess I guess the best way to describe it is this is, you know, this is your bumper to bumper warranty as they say at the car dealership. Um, however, we really mean it. Um, and it basically, if something goes wrong with your machine in those first 12 months, uh, it's completely covered. So you really have peace of mind knowing that, um, you know, if something goes wrong, we're going to take care of it. And I, I feel pretty confident in saying, if you know people who have a Sega products and they've needed, um, to, uh, have something repaired or replaced within that warranty, uh, we really don't typically bat an eye when we do that. Um, we do a good job of taking care uh, of, of our customers. And then up next, these will be brief um, because we only are revealing so much information because these next two um, pieces of equipment are not actually available for order yet, but they will be this year. And that's our fully integrated post-processing solutions. So there's, there's nothing quite like a good wash. So this is these are probably some of the most requested products um, that we that we get is a wash unit and a cure unit. So this is our wash unit, um, and um, the chamber volume is eight liters. The chamber size is in millimeters. Um, and then finally, uh, this is coming as of right now in Q3 of 2024. So that's anywhere between, you know, um, September, August, you know, kind of time frame is kind of our goal uh, right now. And then after a good wash, you need a great cure. So curing units are very, very important when it comes to, uh, when it comes to 3D printing, especially if it's anything that's gonna be used intraorally. So with our curing unit, it's going to have a chamber volume of 1.5 liters, which is a which is a really good size curing unit. And this is going to be coming in uh, roughly Q2 of 2024 of this year. So very soon. Um, keep keep your eyes on our social media because we'll be uh, we'll be announcing it um, with more with more detail in the next uh, in the next couple of months. And then um, despite the fact that we are completely open, we do have an excellent line of dental materials. Are they fantastic resins? 100% yes. Are you required to use them? No, you're not locked into them. Um, but they are, in my opinion, being someone who's printed a, a lot of different 3D print resins, um, the quality of ours being manufactured and engineered by us in Sydney, Australia are absolutely fantastic. So we have our non-biocompatible line. So Denta model, which I think by and large is still regarded as probably the best, uh, the, the best model resin on the market. Um, we have Denta form, which is used, it's a model resin specifically for thermoforming. So um, it has a essentially a, a, a release agent that prevents those thermoplastics, those thermo materials from sticking to the model. We have Denta study for diagnostic and orthodontic study models. We have Denta gum, which is soft tissue for your implant models. And then we have Denta cast for um, investment, uh, uh, investing in casting, uh, things like partials, uh, gold crowns, 
um, non-precious, semi-precious substructures, whatever it may be, anything castable. And then as far as um, FDA cleared materials, So uh, as the video showed, we have a fantastic lineup of materials. Um, and then we also have um, our class two resins that are pending certification and should be completed um, very soon. And that's our dented base and dented tooth um, for dentures. So denture base plate and denture tooth resins. Then finally, our complete lineup. So from left to right, we have the all new Asiga Ultra. We have the brand new and refreshed Max 2. We have the Asiga Wash, the Asiga Cure. Um, some of you may not be familiar with the next one, the second from the right. This is actually our Max X. This isn't used widely in dentistry. Uh, it is used in um, several other industries, uh, primarily uh, microfluidics. Um, it's similar to the Max UV, um, just as, as an ultra high resolution and very small build plate. Um, and then finally, on the right-hand side, we have um, the trusted Pro 4K, which is kind of our, our you know, our, our high production workhorse. And that's all, folks. You can visit us online at asiga.com. Um, if anybody has questions, you, you are welcome to reach out to me. Uh, my email address is just my name, uh, Bryce dot h at asiga.com so i'm always happy to to chit chat answer questions um help out you know with anything you guys might need i do have a and question thank you. yeah 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 and they're probably going to keep on coming in now so he wants to know what printed material is used for the flexible partials so um great question and they're they're really um they're really aren't there really aren't any i don't believe there are any that are fda approved um if there are i'm not aware of it um and the reason being is flexible partials are um in terms of their mechanical properties it's very hard to formulate a resin for that uh, i'm not saying it's not going to happen um I, I it is going to happen um and i think it you know hopefully will be sooner than than most people think um, but the reason that that's a difficult resin to formulate is because you really need a resin that kind of varies in terms of its flexibility, right? Because that main connector, you don't want that main connector to be too flexible. Um, you actually want, you know, you, for most cases, you want actually a little bit, a, a little bit more rigidity out of that main connector where you really need that flexibility or in, or in the clasps. Um, so it's, it's difficult to formulate a resin that maintains the rigidity in the main connector while remaining flexible in the clasps. So um, I think that's why it's it's taking a little bit longer for that resin to be formulated and released to market. Just kind of hard to do. Um, but it I I have there's no doubt in my mind that it is. Um, uh, I, I don't think we're too far off from that. So yeah. Keith also wants to know, he's using Keystone uh, Soft, Keystone Print Soft. And he said, mm -hmm. why does it come out clear in the ultra gloss tray, but when you light cure it, it gets a light gray look to it. Um, so he's using ultra gloss, and then after the cure, um, it's okay. there's a light gray right. tint. Yeah. It may, it's, it's hard to say just, you know, I would need more information. It, it, I would need to know what kind of curing unit, um, the exact post-processing procedure um, that that's being done there. Um, it's kind of a lot of variables. It's hard to answer with just that. Yeah, he's if you can give us some more information, or even if you want to email it to me at uh, 
zondental at henryshine.com, I could send that over to Bryce and yep. he'd be able to help you. Yep, absolutely. Um, Patrick wants to know, what is the smallest theoretical, smallest pixel size with 3D printing? Uh, the key word, <laughs> uh, interesting question. The key word there is, is theoretical, right? I mean, theoretical one, one micron pixel resolution is theoretically possible. There's no, there's nothing preventing that other than, um, frankly, probably the, the, the cost to manufacture a projector with that resolution. Um, I mean, I think at this point there's like 16 K like film projectors out there. Um, which if you were to put that into a desktop 3D printer would probably be like a five or less micron pixel res resolution. I don't know the exact number, but theoretically, yeah, one one micron pixel resolution is theoretically possible. Um, now, in terms of what we actually have on the market, um, especially in terms of DLP, the Ultra 32 is going to be... Um, the Ultra 32 and our Sega Max X27 are going to be the the uh, the best pixel resolution on the market at this point. Awesome. So thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Patrick, for that question. Very good question. Interesting. We're still yeah. taking questions, so please type them in at the bottom. Um, and I want to thank Bryce so much for being so gracious and, and giving us all of this great information on what's new and exciting with the Sega. But I have one more poll that I'm going to put up. And then we'll be talking about what's new on Zon Academy and what you can look forward to seeing. So in April, we have Nemotech, which is a software, a dental software about ortho and surgical and implant treatment planning. So that's gonna be on April 3rd at 2 p.m. Eastern. On April 10th, same time, 2 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be talking about navigating through 3D printing resins. And that will be with Dennis Urban. And he is the 2024 CDT of the year. So it's always great to hear from him. And we are coming to a city near you. Our road shows are up and running. And on April 19th, we'll be in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, we will be in Salt Lake City, Utah on May 2nd and 3rd. And on May 2nd, we'll be doing a three-shape hands-on denture design course. And we're only accepting 10 attendees for that one. We wanna make that as much as one-on-one -on -one as we possibly can. And there are only four spots remaining for that particular course. So we look forward to seeing you live and in person. It's great coming to the road shows. They're a lot of fun. We learn an awful lot. And we love being with our customers from city to city. So please look at Zon Academy zondental.com for more information on what uh, cities will be heading to next. We're going to be coming to you month by month to the end of the year. So I want to thank everybody so much for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you upcoming on Zon Academy. Thank you so much and have a great day, everybody. And thank you. Thank Brian. you, everyone. Seek a crew. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming. And thank you, uh, to everyone is on for for hosting this and and uh letting me come talk to you guys today so i really appreciate it well we appreciate you and corey and everybody over at asiga so thank you so much